Hello again, and welcome to another Tuesday Bulletin of Engineering Information from the IBA. Go for UK DBS as the movie channel set the BSB ball rolling for cable viewers on Sunday evening. And today we start a three-part series on the Mac system by looking at the vision part of the satellite transmission format. In Transmitter News, a community radio update and details of two new television relays. Penryu Kyber near Mountain Ash in Mid Glamorgan and Long Compton near Stratford upon Avon. The advent of high power direct broadcasting by satellite enables most viewers to use dishes around 40 centimeters in diameter or the equivalent square aerial. The five BSB channels use a new transmission system called DMAC. This is one of a family of standards recommended for DBS by the European Broadcasting Union. Much of the development work on the vision format, which is common to all the Mac variants, was carried out by IBA engineers here in Winchester. So why the need for a new system? Why not continue to use PAL? The present colour television systems were designed many years ago. When colour started, it was essential that millions of viewers with black and white sets should continue to be able to use them, receiving the colour transmissions in monochrome. The European Channel Plan for both VHF and UHF had been agreed some years before colour was contemplated, so the new colour transmissions had to fit within the same overall bandwidth already occupied by the monochrome signals. The answer? A frequency sharing scheme. A colour subcarrier placed at the high frequency end of the luminance signal. But there is a side effect for viewers watching in colour. The receiver's decoder can't distinguish between fine luminance detail and genuine colour information. The result, spurious patterning known as cross-colour. There's also another effect. The colour subcarrier produces a moving pattern on areas of highly saturated colour. This pattern of crawling dots is particularly visible on coloured edges. Once the colour and luminance are mixed together, it's extremely difficult to separate them again completely. Domestic PAL decoders simply have a notch in the luminance path to reduce the dot crawl caused by the colour subcarrier. And the simple bandpass filter in the chroma path lets through high frequency luminance information. Another less obvious disadvantage is that PAL is inefficient. Much of the time is spent carrying sync pulses and blanking periods. Only about three quarters of the signal carries actual picture information. There's another reason for avoiding PAL on satellites. The transmissions use frequency modulation rather than amplitude modulation as for terrestrial PAL. This is done to minimize power consumption on the satellite. With AM, the received noise level is constant across the received bandwidth. But in FM systems, the noise increases linearly in proportion to the frequency of the modulating signal. This doesn't matter too much for luminance, since the eye is less sensitive to high-frequency noise. But with the PAL colour signal carried on a 4.43 MHz subcarrier, the result is that all areas of saturated colour are more susceptible to noise. So while PAL and CCAM can work well, they're not ideal for FM, and they are not readily adaptable for future developments. MAC stands for Multiplexed Analog Components. It does away with the colour subcarrier and so completely avoids the problem of cross-colour and cross-luminance. Also gone are the conventional sync pulses, making room for extra sound and data channels. MAC keeps to the 625 line format, but using time sharing, each line of separate colour difference and luminance information is, in effect, squeezed, so that during each transmitted line, there's room to put first the colour difference, then the luminance. And this is what it looks like, in its compressed and undecoded form. We've added conventional sync pulses for this demonstration, otherwise you wouldn't see a locked picture. You won't see any colour here, it's just a monochrome representation of what the vision part of the MAC signal looks like before it's decoded. On the right hand side of the screen you can see the luminance signal. It's squashed to two thirds of its normal width, from 52 microseconds down to about 35. To preserve all the detail in the picture, the transmission bandwidth has to be increased. 
The highest baseband vision frequency is about 5.6 megahertz. In PAL, it's 5.5. With two-thirds time compression, the bandwidth must be increased by 3 to 2, or 50 percent, up to 8.4 megahertz. Of course, here we're seeing the signal in conventional PAL, which limits the bandwidth to 5.5 megahertz, or much worse on a domestic video recorder. That's why you can't see all the resolution gratings on the test card. On the satellite, it all fits comfortably into the 27 megahertz wide FM channel. The picture on the left represents the compressed color signal. This has alternate lines of the color difference signals U and V. Each line is compressed to a third of its original 52 microseconds, down to about 17 and a half. The maximum baseband bandwidth available for color difference is 2.8 MHz, rather better than the 1.3 MHz of PAL. The MAC decoder uses digital circuitry to expand the picture to its correct shape, and the output is in RGB components. The result is a much cleaner, sharper picture than is possible with PAL. But to make the most of the improved picture quality, it's best to use a Perry television or SCART connector to feed the television set. Some BSB receivers are expected to have S connectors, giving better quality pictures on some video recorders. If your TV hasn't got a Perry television socket, the satellite receiver offers a UHF output in PAL, but there's still an improvement in color signal to noise ratio compared to transmission in PAL. Mac also offers another first for British television. Films on BSB's movie channel are in widescreen format with an aspect ratio of 16 to 9 compared to the conventional squarer 4 to 3 shape. The first widescreen TVs are likely to appear towards the end of this year, but there's no compatibility problem with existing sets. BSB MAC decoders include the necessary expansion circuitry to produce correctly proportioned 4 to 3 pictures from the 16 to 9 source. More on widescreen and higher definition systems in the third of these installments on the MAC system. We'll be looking at sound, data and conditional access in the second part in a couple of weeks. Hello, I'm Andy Birchall, and I'm the Managing Director of the Movie Channel. And that was how the very first official BSB transmissions sent the Movie Channel well and truly on its way for about 250,000 cable viewers on Sunday evening. The other four channels are being launched on successive evenings this week. For direct reception on individual receivers, the start date is the 29th of April. More on that nearer the time. BSB information and countless other details are contained in the latest and last edition of the IBA Pocket Guide to Transmitting Stations, which is now available. If you'd like a copy, please send us a stamped addressed envelope of at least 11 centimetres by 22 centimetres and mark your incoming envelope PG90. If you've already sent off your envelope, please be patient as we've already had over 2,000 requests. No time for special announcements this week, but they're all on Oracle, page 697. New television relays now, and we start with Penwyu Kyber near Mountain Ash in mid Glamorgan, which is due on the air in early April. This will extend UHF coverage to about 320 people in parts of Penwyu Kyber, and it should also help another 213, who at present only receive a marginal signal from Manithmaken or Aberdare. HDV Wales will be on channel 53 with S4C on 60. A group CD aerial will be required with vertical polarization. Penry Ukhaiba is due on the air in early April. The relay at Long Compton to the south of Stratford upon Avon is also due on the air in early April. This relay has been designed to improve UHF television coverage in the Long Compton area for an estimated population of 255. At present, the reception of Lark Stoke in this area is sometimes impaired by co-channel interference from Crystal Palace, so viewers are advised to change to the new relay. 
programmes from Central and TVAM will be on Channel 25 and Channel 4 on 32. Vertically polarised Group A aerials will be required. That's Long Compton, also due in early April. Community Radio next and a number of stations are due on the air this week. Currently on test, Choice FM for the Brixton area on 96.9 MHz with vertical polarisation and scheduled in service from our Croydon transmitter this coming Saturday the 31st. Belfast Community Radio on 96.7 MHz with vertical polarisation from the Black Mountain Television relay site is due on test today. Programmes by and for the Belfast community of about 700,000 are scheduled to start in early April. For the People Radio in Bristol should also start their transmitter test today with programmes from early April. FTP will transmit all kinds of black music aimed mainly at the Afro-Caribbean and Asian communities from Purr Down to the northeast of the city on 97.2 MHz with vertical polarisation. Isle of Wight Radio on 1242 kHz medium wave AM is due on test tomorrow from Briddlesford to the east of Newport. Isle of Wight Radio plan to offer a wide range of locally produced programmes commencing on the 15th of April for the Isle of Wight population of about 120,000 and over 2 million holiday visitors, but not all at once. And finally, another medium wave station, KCBC Radio, with transmitters for Kettering and Corby on 1530 kHz, is hoping to start testing in early April. Popular 50s and 60s music, together with programmes aimed to appeal to a wide range of tastes for local listeners, are due on the air 7th of April. And that's all for this week, but do get in touch if you have any technical queries on independent broadcasting or would like a new pocket guide. Our address, Engineering Information, Independent Broadcasting Authority, Crawley Court, Winchester, Hampshire, SO 21 2QA. And don't forget to mark your envelope PG90 if you want a pocket guide. Our telephone number is Winchester, that's 0962 822 444. Office hours are 8.30 to 4.30. At other times there's an answering machine. Don't forget our link line number at a local rate from anywhere in the country, 0345 078787. We hope you'll join us again.